It's like a weird vegan lava lamp or something. Some of them were going back up. There they go. Rejoin the colony! Make no! Good morning, everybody. I'm about to go to stage two of making some feta cheese from Miyoko Shiner's um, cookbook right here. I already started the rejuvelac, and I've got that in the fridge, so let me show you what that looks Yoko like. Yoko Shiner has a recipe to make rejuvelac in her book, and it's super, super easy, and sometimes I just like a visual, so I went ahead and went over to Mary's Test Kitchen and uh, just watched her video real quick, and it's, it's really, really easy, so I will link that in the description box below. And then right there I have my blanched almonds that I soaked overnight. I'm about to rinse those, and not all of this, but a lot of this is about to go into my Vitamix to blend up to make the cheese base. All right, I've got my rejuvelac in there. I've got some salt in there, and I'm about to put in my almonds. Not a whole lot of exciting steps. It just takes time. Um, you're gonna need at least a week to get at least stuff started to make the rejuvelac, to soak this, and this is gonna have to set up again. Uh, and then she even suggests letting it set up in culture for a long period of time a couple of weeks to get real good flavor out of it so this is not a fast cheese by any stretch of the imagination so you'll be seeing this video in stages all right i just uh, blended this on high for a couple of minutes and uh, she says to do it till it's no more of a greeny texture. It's actually nice and fluffy right now. It tastes really good already. I almost just want to eat this, and you could actually spread this on something and probably be pretty tasty. Now I just need to get a clean container so I can let it sit on the counter and culture for a few days. All right, I got me a little glass container. I just washed it again. Um, for something like this, I want to make sure there's no yuckies in here at all. Um, because this is going to sit on the, the counter to culture some more, so I don't want to introduce any funkies into it. So what it says is to put it in here and cover it with a non-permeable lid, which I think the lid that comes with it should be good. It's got the little rubber seals around it. Or you can cover it with plastic wrap, she said. So I'm hoping that this lid will do the trick. It smells good. You could almost just use this as some sort of cheese spread as is. I don't know. I don't know what the rejuvelac uh, will do to it after it sits in there in the fridge for a couple of days if you were to not actually let this sit out in culture and get tangy and stuff. So, I don't know. Maybe one day I'll actually just test that out and see how that goes. I want every last little bit of this because <laughs> if it turns out good, I don't want to have wasted a drop. Okay, I think, I think that's about as good as I'm gonna get. This is why I love rubber spatulas, man. You can get containers like pretty clean. I'm one of those people who I don't like to leave a lot behind in the container when I'm baking or making anything. So I always use my little rubber spatula to get every last drop out. I don't see the point in wasting, you know, even a tablespoon if I can help it, you know. I'm just going to spread this out so it'll culture evenly, I guess. I don't know, and it looks pretty that way. All right. Have a little splatter on top. And then we're going to wipe my lid down one more time. Make sure there's no oogies on it. Using my uh, unpaper towels, they're Star Wars themed. And unpaper towels, if you haven't seen some of my other videos or you don't belong to my other YouTube channel, Rock Your Reusables, unpaper towels are just reusable paper towels. So um, we haven't used regular paper towels in probably a couple weeks. We just uh, use these bad boys and wash them. Uh, and these are flannel on both sides, so works out really well. Nice and soft. You can also use them as napkins, too. All right, guys. That is it. Ooh, a little bit of a glare there. Eh, a little dark. That's all right. 
So that's it. This is going to sit on my counter for the next day or two. Um, every day I will taste it and see if it's tangy enough for me. Um, and then after that I will move on to the next step, which I believe is the brining stage. So, oh and also adding the agar agar. So I'm just going to let this set out for a day or two. I'm going to check it tomorrow. If it's good, then I'll start the cheese process tomorrow. If not, I will start it on Saturday or Sunday. It just depends on how long it takes because it is kind of cold here, but we do keep the heater on, so I might get lucky. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and um, uh, next time you see the video, it'll be a day or two from now. Yeah. All right, bye. Hey, guys, it's uh, Monday, uh, probably a little bit after 9 or pretty close to it, and we leave for vacation on Wednesday. And so... I don't think my cheese is quite cultured enough. Um, it was only supposed to take like two days and it's already been like four, but it's also been a little chilly here, so it hasn't been quite warm enough and it's not quite tangy just yet, um, but I'm gonna have to go with it because otherwise it's just gonna be sitting here for another week until we get back. So um, I'm gonna do the best I can. And here's what the base looks like right now, nice and thick and creamy. It tastes really good right now. Like I said, I could stick this in the fridge and just use it as a spread and be happy with it, but I'm going to still attempt to turn it into feta. First, I have my 8x8 uh, eight eight inch square uh, baking dish lined with some cheesecloth. Next, next, I need to add the water and the agar agar together, the agar powder together, and whisk it, cover it, let it simmer, and then I should be able to mix everything together. All right, I'm just gonna whisk to combine, and then I'm going to stick the lid on and let it come to a simmer. I don't know, I think maybe I created a monster. It got way bubbly. Hopefully it's okay. It's a little thick. She said if it does this, um, to let it come back to a simmer over low heat for a few more minutes, and it should get liquidy and bubbly again. So, fingers crossed. All right, so I just went for it. I think it got bubbly and liquidy again. I'm just putting it in there. I'm gonna whisk the crap out of it until it gets fluffy again. <laughs> All right, guys, so it's a little lumpy. <laughs> um, I'm turning the heat on super, super low, hoping that it'll kind of melt what's in there. I don't know. Um, I'm just gonna do this for a few more minutes, and if it stays lumpy, it stays lumpy. I guess I will just see how the cheese turns out and just uh, keep trying. All right guys, uh, next step will be putting it in the mold. All right, there it is. You can see that it's nice and lumpy, bumpy, kind of like uh, if you ever made cheesecake when you were non-vegan and you used gelatin and gelatin didn't quite dissolve all the way. Yep, that's what this looks like. Sorry, it's not focusing. So this is going to go in the fridge. Um, it's gonna be overnight. And then tomorrow when I get off work, I'm going to cut it into blocks and we're going to start the brining process. So wish me luck that even though it's lumpy bumpy, it still turns out yummy. Good morning guys. So I did the next step and I didn't film it because I was tired, but this is the cheese. It did harden up um, and it's in the brine that soaked overnight. And then now I'm just about to switch it to a new container, um, put some brine in with some fresh water and then it is going to sit in our fridge until we get home from our vacation. So it'll have at least a week to age. I'll try it after a week and then she said it tastes even better after a month. So we will see how it goes, but I will do the tasting when we get back and then I'll post this video after that. And then um, I'll try to keep you updated on how it tastes um, as we go. So, all right guys, um, let me just show you how I'm gonna put it together. All right guys, here it is. Um, I don't have a container to lay it completely flat in, so. I'll pretty sure this will be good enough. Um, so I just filled the container with a little bit of the brine and then the rest of the way with the water. And um, maybe when I get back, I'll just rotate the one that's on top and put it on the bottom and um, just keep rotating them like that until I've eaten some and made some room. So this is a nice airtight container. I like these little guys. It has the little silicone around the edges and it snaps in place so everything should stay where it's supposed to stay. All right, guys, next time you see me, it'll be back in a week, and we'll be doing a taste test. Hello, I got my phone to sit on my Vitamix tripod. Yay. So I've been needing to finish this video up for a long time now. This is my uh, cheese video, which obviously you know because this is the end of it. Uh, but I was going to um, tell you what it tasted like when I got back from my trip. 
but I've been lazy. <laughs> and um, I've actually, I actually, I've actually already tasted it and it tastes good. But let me kind of show you guys. I don't want to drip on everything. Here, let's just kind of cover stuff up with a towel. So there it is. Nice texture. Kind of even looks like feta a little bit. Now, when I tasted it the other day, um, my brine solution was a little too strong. So next time I make it, um, I'm not going to make the brine that I let it soak in forever quite as strong. So when I got home and I tasted that, I dumped another half of it out and just added back in some fresh spring water. So um, here's a little piece of what the inside looks like. Let's see if I can get that to... I don't think it's gonna focus, but it looks like uh, it looks like the inside of feta cheese. It's got a nice salty, briny. That's about as good as it's gonna get flavor. I'm hoping it's been soaking for like another week or two um, in the less briny um, solution. So hopefully, this next bite won't be quite as salty as the first one. Not quite as salty, but still pretty salty. It's pretty good, even though the agar agar kind of got a little funky. It hasn't seemed to affect the flavor too much. But I could see this giving you your your salty feta fix. <laughs> salty feta fix. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I would give this a try if I were you guys. Just go ahead and get her book, the Miyoko Shiners... Um, vegan pantry. <laughs> Let me go get it. This one. Get this book. That's the recipes in there. Alright guys, so it turned out really well. Like I said, it was just a little on the salty side, but that's not 100% a bad thing because this isn't something that I normally would just eat. Well, back in the old days I would, so that's kind of a lie. But this is something I'll probably end up like putting in sandwiches or um, better yet, sorry, probably putting this like in salads or something like that. So um, it'll add like a nice salty, creamy, cheesy kind of kick, but it was very good. So I would recommend getting that book um, and go ahead and giving this cheese a try. And that is it. The video is finally over. Yay! It took me, I don't know what, a month and a half to make this video from start to finish. Not because it takes that long to make this cheese, but I got lazy there for a little while. So. Alright guys, thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you go out and get her book and give this a shot. And if you do, in the comment section below, uh, let me know what you thought about it, if you made any changes and all that good stuff, and what you use it in and things like that. So I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye. So, yeah. Yeah.